on today's show, there are rumours flying around that say a longer range BMW i3 is on the way with a 350k battery pack range. Munro and Associates say the Model 3 electric car is solidly profitable and a Silicon Valley startup comes out of stealth and says we'll get our flying cars in the next year or so, for a price of course. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host, and we've got everything from flying drones to speed records this week, so let's get on with it. Beamer Today, a German-based news site that's known for being pretty accurate with its BMW rumour reporting, published a story this week that's got everyone talking. Citing sources at the company, it claims that a new battery pack for the i3 is on the way that could push the i3's range in excess of 350 kilometres per charge. That rating is based off the overly optimistic NEDC test cycle, but given the rumoured capacity of the battery pack, 42 kilowatt hours, we should see easy more than 150 miles in the real world. Unlike other automakers, BMW does currently offer battery upgrades for lower capacity i3s, meaning conceivably those of you with earlier model year i3s could get a massive boost in range just by upgrading the battery. Sadly it's a rumour right now, but I'll let you know if I hear anything more concrete. Just as last week's show was going live, the Goodwood Festival of Speed was taking place in the UK, and as promised, Volkswagen's IDR Pikes Peak race car competed on the super short British hill climb circuit, setting a new record for electric vehicles and third overall, with a time of 43.86 seconds. There was also a hairy moment when the car decided to go off-road, but that's another story. Also competing at Goodwood was the NIO EP9 electric supercar, which managed to set a fastest time for street legal cars on slicks, setting a time of 44.61 seconds. While road legal, however, don't expect to be buying one anytime soon. The EP9 is essentially NIO's halo car with its sibling, the ES8 crossover, currently on sale in China. Congratulations to both teams and here's to more record setting next year. While you may not see one yet where you live, Hyundai has now officially begun production and sales of the Kona electric SUV in South Korea, selling some 1,000 examples to its domestic market and shipping another 1,120 or so to the export world. Norway is likely to be one of the first markets to get the Kona electric, with only the long-range 64 kilowatt hour battery pack variant offered there. A shorter range version will be offered in some markets with a 39.2 kilowatt hour battery pack, but with the pricing yet to be announced in most markets, we'll have to wait a little longer to find out which markets get which models and for how much. A Volvo's Polestar brand is currently getting its first car ready for market, the Polestar 1, a high-performance carbon fiber plug-in hybrid coupe with a six-figure price tag. But last weekend at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, Polestar COO Jonathan Goodman let out a few details about the Polestar 2. Rather than be a plug-in hybrid, this vehicle will be an all-electric model that Volvo's performance brand hopes will cross-shop against the Tesla Model 3. Similar in size to the Volvo XC40, the electric crossover is is expected to debut sometime next year and will likely be offered with a range of different battery pack and motor combinations just like the Tesla Model 3. The car Volvo is clearly wanting to chase in the marketplace. Expect more firm details in the coming months. Panasonic, Tesla's number one battery partner and heavy investor in Gigafactory One, has officially suspended its ties with a Canadian cobalt supplier due to possible violation of the US trade embargo with Cuba. The company in question sourced some of its cobalt from Cuba, a practice which could have caused Panasonic and thus Tesla to fall foul of current US administration trade embargoes on the nation. Tesla and Panasonic recently announced that they've tweaked their lithium-ion battery production process to minimize the amount of cobalt used in their battery packs, so this shouldn't have a long-term effect on either company's battery production, especially since Panasonic appears to have other cobalt suppliers it can use to take up the slack. It may have not received its official production debut yet, but it seems that the Porsche Taycan, nay Mission E, has captured a great deal of interest among loyal Porsche fans, with the company stating this week that customers are already jockeying for position on the waitlist. While official figures are yet to be released, Porsche's UK Managing Director told Autocar this week that the 2019 Taycan is based on an all-new Porsche platform called J1. 
This allows for super fast charging, a chassis mounted battery pack and powerful all wheel drivetrain. Porsche says the car will also copy Tesla's over the air update system, hinting that customers may be able to upgrade their car's performance on an ad hoc basis using over the air updates. Is the Tesla Model 3 profitable? It's a question that both Tesla Shorts and Tesla fans have been trying to answer for months, and now renowned automotive engineering teardown company Monroe & Associates thinks it has the answer. Yes. Completing its months-long teardown of the luxury sedan, Sandy Munro and his company says that the Model 3's clever cell design and construction, something he was initially wary of, appears to make the Model 3 a profitable car, estimating more than a 30% profit margin on it at the moment. I should of course note here that the car Munro and Associates dismantled wasn't an entry-level Model 3, but a higher spec long range Model 3. And that means that the entry level Model 3 could net Tesla even more margin. This means Tesla should soon be able to start paying off its massive debts, assuming of course it doesn't undertake any more big projects and start turning an overall profit. Nissan's tuning arm, Nismo, has officially unveiled the performance tweaked version of the current new Nissan Leaf, with the first Leaf Nismo cars due to go on sale in Japan at the end of this month. With Nismo body kit and special black 18-inch wheels, the Leaf Nismo does look slightly different to the regular Leaf. But, says Nissan, it also includes a tuned chassis and tuned power controller, giving a stronger acceleration and sportier handling. There's no words on pricing or availability yet, but given Nissan won't be selling the Nismo variant outside of Japan, the only way you're likely to get one in New Zealand is to import a grey market one from Japan. Sorry. With more and more EVs on the road and more and more EVs in their senior years, there's an increasingly large number of used electric car battery packs around the world. And that means that we're starting to see more second life battery projects for recycling those used battery packs. This week, a new one went online thanks to a collaboration between BMW and EVgo, which will see used i3 battery packs repackaged to provide grid-tied storage to high-power EVgo quick charging stations. By doing so, the charging station provider can help avoid high-demand charges from the local utility company, as well as allow it to pull power from the grid during low-cost and low-demand periods to store locally at the station for use later. It's a win-win-win all round and should help literally everybody. And finally, after nine years of operating in stealth mode, Silicon Valley startup Opener, which is backed by Google co-founder Larry Page, has gone public with details of its Blackfly, a personal all-electric vertical takeoff and landing drone with a range of about 25 miles per charge and an option for charging that will enable a full refuel in just 25 minutes. What's more, it's already certified for flight in the US and Canada under the ultra light vehicle classification. Prices are expected to be about the price of an SUV, so it's not going to be something everyone can afford, and I don't know if it will ever come to New Zealand, but I totally want to go. What about you? And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, well, you know what to do. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.